it is official. Jim Radcliffe wants to buy Manchester United. But is Jim Radcliffe the answer to all our prayers? Anyone but the Glazers? I'm probably going to be with you, but it might not be as simple as it seems. Now, the news that Jim Radcliffe wants to buy United has been meted with good reason by a lot of praise, celebration and excitement by Manchester United fans. And it's been almost universal in its positivity. And I think when something is universal in its positivity, I think it's always worth looking at the other side of the coin to just to see if we're getting a raw deal or if there's actually a lot of benefits to be gleamed from this. Ratcliffe is wealthy. He is a United fan. We think. He seemed to play down the United links and try to beef up his Chelsea links when he was in the process of buying Chelsea. But it seems like he is a United fan and he might have just played up the Chelsea links when he was interested in buying Chelsea. He does have experience of running a football club and sports teams and he has called out the Glazers for the way that they've run out the club so far. These all seem, on the face of things, like good qualities and that's the sort of person we would want to be buying the club off the Glazers. But there's something which I've seen which I think is interesting. Now, the Glazers have been horrific owners and done so much damage to our club to our fan base to the unity within the fan base and it seems that fans are just fully failing to analyze the pros and cons of each potential candidate now dubai seems like a very strong candidate pros pretty much unlimited money cons probably going to be used as a sports washing entity the same way manchester city and paris Saint germain are. now there's some people that that's too much for them to take I don't know where I stand on this. On one hand, you're like, well, I just see this being the way it goes. And if you're not in this game, there isn't going to be a game. Fan ownership, I put my money where my mouth is, with Stratford Paddock. Because I believe in fan ownership, but is it a realistic goal for clubs that are worth tens of billions of pounds? I'm not saying Jim Radcliffe is going to be worse than the Glazers. I, I'm actually not sure that's possible, to be honest. But there are potential worries with Jim Radcliffe as our new owner. And I think it's worth, and it's the due diligence, to explore those. So the first thing that you've got to look at and you've got to explore is Nice. The first potential with Jim Radcliffe owning Manchester United is he owns another football club in Nice. He took over Nice in August 2019. And according to our friend, French football journalist Julien Laurent, uh, his ownership of Nice is viewed as quite mixed. His intentions have supposedly been good on a league unscale. There's been good investment in the side. They've spent 200 million euros since he acquired the club, which is not bad for a French side. A lot of the money was invested in younger players, which gives the impression of vision and long-term sort of strategy. And United, of course, makes so much more in revenue that in contrast to Nice, you'd expect him to operate the club in a similar way, but scaled up for the size and the revenues involved. However, on the pitch results certainly have to be questioned they finished sixth in the first season which is under patrick vieira interestingly then ninth then fifth they had a cup final when galtier who is now the psg manager was in charge which was clearly a good appointment from radcliffe however this season it's not good they sit 10th in league un they sacked their replacement from galtier in january not a lot of time to get stuck into the team. They had a shocker in the Coupe de France. They got knocked out by a third tier side in the round of 64. And the problems for Radcliffe have been most apparent after the club parted ways with Galtier last season. They also lost their sporting director, Julian uh, Fournier. Radcliffe then appointed um, Ian Moody, formerly of Cardiff and Crystal Palace. Active negotiations fell by the wayside. The, they've been replaced by a British-centric approach, which has led to the arrivals of Ross Barkley, Aaron Ramsey, Joe Bryan, as well as Premier League players Kasper Schmeichel, Nicholas Pepe uh, and Mad Sorensen. The club has had limited success with these players and their recently departed manager Favre didn't even know how old Barkley was. Ten Hag has proven that signing players from a league you were working at previously does work, or at least can work. And it seems Radcliffe made a mistake in trying to continue the work uh, of that winning formula. Radcliffe has changed who is in charge of transfers again. Now it's a guy called Florent Gisolfi, a man who was partly responsible for building the current Lens team that's only three points behind PSG. Again, on the face of things, potentially a good appointment. And that should be positive. This whole bizarre last year has proven that Radcliffe 
can make mistakes as an owner or the football club in his charge at least can make mistakes but could the same happen at United and if it happened at United it's not as easy to right a wrong the numbers involved are a lot more eye-watering the clubs involved and the level of the Premier League is far more competitive than League One I'm sure he would try and change some of the structures but who is his internal football advisor or is he doing this himself you have to understand what Jim Radcliffe's intentions actually are where are his priorities where do they lie he is obviously a stupidly successful businessman as of april 2020 bloomberg's billionaires index i mean just just being on that alone you've won life right but his estimated net worth is 28.2 billion dollars he is the second richest man in the uk and has created an absolute monster of a company in ineos could radcliffe try and be trying to buy United to further promote Ineos in the way that some of the sports watching nations are trying to promote their nations. In theory, United are a club that makes so much money that you don't really necessarily need a sugar daddy. You just need to clear the debts and United would make enough money to you operate profitably and also be competitive with wages and in the transfer market. Martin Edwards proved that pre-Glazers when United was having record-breaking revenues and also record-breaking spend on transfers. We're talking the the Veron, Ruud van Nistelrooy, Rio, Rooney, Ronaldo sort of era, right up to 2005 when we decided we didn't really want to play that game anymore and wonder why. In 13 years before the Glazers took over United, we made over £250 million, uh, in profits while winning eight league titles. And you've got to remember, inflation, football inflation has changed in a big way since then. The club made 709 million euros in revenue in 2022. However, we also recorded 115 million net loss for the financial year, June 2022. And we also saw net debt rise 95.4 million to the tune of 514.9 million. So even bringing in 700 million a year, the debt, rises nearly 100 million which tells me that the club is not being run well the glazer family also took out 33.6 million in dividends so at least they're all right this shows the club is still making money and it shows that the glazers mismanagement withdrawals dividends debt refinancing it shows how successful united could have been if they just hadn't a fucking bothered radcliffe therefore should just need to manage the club i'm trying to think of a pc word of saying this here without being an idiot, just don't fuck it up too bad, and United makes money. Clear the debt, clear the refinancing costs, clear the dividends, United makes money. It makes more than enough money to be able to be competitive in the transfer markets. However, Radcliffe never explained why he wants Manchester United. He's never explained where the funding from Manchester United come. He's never explained if he needs to borrow against any assets to acquire Manchester United. And after failing to pur purchase Chelsea, which... You know, they went for a lot of money, but I think United's going to go for money that's going to dwarf what Chelsea went for. He said, we really should have an asset from the Premier League in the sporting franchise. But why? We have to remember that United are now going to be competing against sports washing nations. Newcastle, Manchester City in England, with even the potential that Liverpool are bought out by another one. And you've got it on the continent. Sorting the books out might not be enough. Look at Liverpool. They managed to be competitive and wanked off into oblivion for that, but they dropped off massively because they weren't able to sustain that. And that's the one reason why I think people are even entertaining the possibility of us being bought by a sports washing nation, because people want that success. And for a lot of people, they don't care where it comes from. And it's more than just acquiring the club. Old Trafford needs more than a baby wipe and a karcher. It needs some investment into the facility. Carrington... <laughs> They spent a lot of money on building it, but we might have even outgrown it. A club the size of Manchester United should not have the the acreage that we have. It should be bigger. It is not by any stretch of the imagination the biggest training ground in the country or even in the region. Is Radcliffe going to be able to deliver on the buyout and the infrastructure redevelopment at both Carrington and Old Trafford, as well as putting out a competitive team on the pitch? United are in the realms of being worth so much money right now that almost anyone outside of a nation who buys us is going to feel the pinch to do everything that we as fans want and that the club deserves because we've been robbed by our current owners. They've put nothing in and will walk away with close to 10 billion in their pockets.
is the heist of the century. And I'm not saying Jim Radcliffe will be a bad owner. I'm saying anybody that wants to own this football club should be looked into. Every single one. Why? And what are your intentions? And what are you going to do to make us competitive again? Otherwise, you end up like Manchester City. Bought by a crook in Taskin Sinawatra, and then bought by a nation and used as a sports washing and all of the rule breaking that we've seen since with Manchester City. And I don't want that for United. We don't need that for United. There is evidence to suggest things might not be as smooth as we would all hope they are, but there's evidence to suggest that the ambition is there to do the right thing. And you've got to remember as well, Nice are not Manchester United. They don't have the same pull. And things become easier when it's Manchester United. Now, it does seem like he's got his heart in the right place. I'd like him to come out and let us know why he wants to buy Manchester United. Maybe that's something for further down the line, but let us know what you guys think. Can't wait to see some of your comments. I'm sure some people will get it twisted, but for those of you with a brain, please get in the comments and let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.